Hello everyone, this is Xander Turon, and I'm here with a new kind of series I might be doing, and I'm tentative name is Let's Try. Anyway, so what I have here is a game called Feria. It recently came out of early access on Steam, so it's in full release now, and it's free to play, so I figure I might as well give it a try. Anyway, it is a collectible card game, whatever they call them. It's something like Hearthstone, you know, stuff like that. It's with a bit of a twist, because it's not just a collectible card fighting game. It is also a, um, whatchamacallit, words fail me, hex-based tactics game. Turn-based. I guess I'd have to show you anyway. So yeah, it's a fun little game. It is free to play, so obviously there is... There is going to be, you know, the premium items and whatnot. Um, just from a first glance, it doesn't seem like it's too horribly broken. If I can go to the shop. <coughs> like, I haven't played the, tried playing the game online yet. I've just been doing the training missions and whatnot. Anyway, so just to take a quick look at the economy. So, $1 gets to you 250 gems and then so on and so forth. And, you know, the more... The bigger packages of gems you buy, the bon more bonus gems you get. And so to get a battle chest, as they're called, which is basically a booster pack, you see there are a thousand gold, which is the standard in-game currency, which you earn doing stuff, or 250 gems, or one dollar per battle chest. So I, I'm sure someone, you know, with more experience with these kind of games could tell me if, you know, could say, you know, one dollar for five cards, you know, if that's a good deal or not. And then you have Mythic Chests, which from my understanding are mostly just a lot of it. It's not necessarily better stuff. It's just a lot of words fail me. It's like a lot of... <clears throat> Why can't I... Aesthetic stuff. There you go. I can find the words to speak. Yeah, it's aesthetic stuff. Stuff like that. Anyway. So I'm going to buy one battle chest with gold. So I can open it and show you that. Go to here. So you click on it. And you get five cards. Click to flip them over. And now, as you see, they have different things at the bottom that tell you what they do. Or their rarity, I should say. So the gray one like this is... Um, words fail me. Gray is common, blue is rare, and then purple is very rare, and then I can't remember what the words is, things like epic or some, something like that is yellow. I'm sure they maybe have fancy names, you know, sapphire and amethyst and citron or anywhere. Anyway, so whenever you open a battle pack, you are guaranteed to get at least um, one rare card or something like that. Um, it's new, so I guess I'll keep it. Daily qu oh, apparently I completed a daily quest. Because, yeah, you get daily quests, I can show you here. As I am aware, I'm out of... Oh, my God. So you do that stuff, and you get rewards, so 400 gold. As well as also when I first started recording, as you would have seen, there's a... Basically, I think it's a daily login bonus or something like that. So if you log in, you get a small amount of gold or maybe some gems or some other stuff. And when you level up, you get stuff. So I haven't played, I've put it in just a little over an hour into the game. So anyway, you have five different types of cards. So you have neutral cards, which are neutral. They don't have any sort of color affiliation. So you can play them whenever. And then you have Green, which is, you know, forest base. Blue, which is water. Red, which is fire. Yellow, which is sand, desert, and whatnot. <coughs> anyway. So, since I like, to, I like to use green. So as you see, so that's your mana cost, how much it costs to, you know, to, to play the card. That's damage, or attack, and that's HP. And then that's stuff. Gift is basically 
I could probably explain it better in game, but anyway. And then you have that number there. So that's how many of the associated tiles you need to have on under your control on the field in order to play that card. So I need to have two forest tiles in order to play this guy. And yeah, these guys, they said they're completely unaffiliated, so it doesn't matter what they have. And I just I just love this yak. The prairie yak is the greatest card ever. I love that thing. I want a plush version of it. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, there's a crafting system. I haven't looked too much into it. Show mythics. That's, that's stuff that you get from Whatchamacallit, from the mythic chess. I think they're just alternate variants of the vari of the different cards. I'm sure someone could better explain that. This is just kind of more of a, not really first impression. It's just, I thought it was an interesting game that I wanted to show off to you guys. So yeah, production it does stuff. That taunt, taunt means any adjacent enemies have to attack it. Last words means that when the card is removed from play, or killed, or dead, whatever you want to call it, it does whatever. Gift is something when it's played, it does it automatically. And then you also have spell cards and whatnot. I think it was if I go to this one, it has the different rarities. Yep. Yeah. So it's common, rare, epic, that's what it is, and legendary. I can't remember things. And yeah, whenever you click the logo here, you'll ta be taken back to the main screen here. Settings, not a lot to be said. Um, this is your profile. I presume this is my ranking. And Pandora is a different mode that does stuff. I haven't played it yet. And then you have the different avatars. Orb is... It's, I can explain it better. And then that's what the back of your cards work like, look like. Well, and that's... Once again, I have to get into a game to actually show some of the stuff off. Speaking of which, let's actually get into a game. Actually, first, it's, not, it's like this, I'm not coordinating this very well. <clears throat> anyway, so um, I've gotten these just by leveling up, you know, level up rewards, and you get what's called a formula, I think they want to call it. And anyway, so it's, I pick one of these, yeah, formula, so complete missions to unlock this, reach a certain level. And the difference, so I, for example, like to use the green starter deck. That number there is the average mana cost per card. So this one's not particularly high. I don't have a, I have a lot of mid range, low and mid range. I don't really have a lot of high end units in this, or creatures, or cards, whatever you want to call them. So this is, I have a little bit of blue in here for some fun things that I found. I haven't changed the name. It's just the green starter deck. So what you do is you have. 30 cards per deck, so if I want to maybe get rid of that, click on it, and then find whatever else I want. But I, I, I don't know. Campfire. There you go. And that's how you do it. So I'm, I'm not overly familiar with, you know, collectible card games, so I couldn't tell you how it compares to the other ones. I just thought it was a fun game. Give it a try. And let's go. Game. Solo. Yeah, um, Pandora. Th Pandora has is a special variation on things. It changes up, I think, how the in battle economy works with mana, and gives you some other fun cards to use. Anyway, training. So I got to fight this person. We get 80 XP. And you also have objectives. You complete the objective, and you get a reward. So for this one, it looks like I get a new um, avatar. I think. I think they're actually called gods or something. In game, I can explain it when I get in battle. Take my green starter. <coughs> Callum is aggressive. Defend your orb carefully. So that's just kind of what that basically is going to tell me what that told me what kind of AI I have to expect. All right, so I'm in game. That's how much HP my avatar has, or my god is what it's called. So I have first move. Um. And so you have the option to mulligan. Um, go. Drop. The, redraw this guy. So confirm. And now I have that dude. So these here are mana wells. Or wells. 
and you can get things that change the appearance of them. This is your god. The thing it sits in is the orb. You can get a different gods and orbs for, you know, cosmetic stuff. Over here, so that's how much mana I have banked. You get three mana per turn, and then when you move a unit next to one of these mana wells, you get one mana. Or if you, say if I were to spawn, what I'm going to do, I'm going to place two of these prairie tiles. That's what they're called. That's neutral terrain. And place this guy here. It does not immediately collect it. However, at the beginning of next turn, if that guy's still alive, I will collect it. Then end turn. So, since this guy has the second move to make up for the disadvantage, what happens is... Um, you get a card called Expiration or whatever, which gives you plus two mana and also gives you a free prairie tile to put down. And then you have this selector here. So from here you can either draw one card, collect one mana, place two neutral tiles, or you can place one color tile. If you want, so let's say I'll place this guy right here. And I'll place I have 4 XP. I don't have enough force to draw up this guy, so instead I'll go with the Prairie Yak. Because Prairie Yak is the greatest thing on Earth. And end turn. And if you want, if you have to look at anything you know, you just hover over the card and you'll see what it does. Any unit abilities will be explained above the card. You see Death Touch, destroy any creature this damages. And now the thing is, is when you attack an enemy creature with another one of yours, they both attack each other. So, if you were to send a unit with, like, say, 3 HP against this guy, the Queen's Assassin, that unit's gonna die because it says Death Touch. Or if they send something with, you know, 2 HP, this will kill it if they, even if they get a mutual kill on my Prey Yak, my Prey Yak still kills it. <clears throat> and over here is just a record of things that happened. Yeah. Then I'll end turn. <coughs> Oblivion Rider, charge three. Charge. Move up to three spaces in a straight line. Um. We go. Six attack. Um. And then you also have to spawn a creature. On, if it's a color-based creature, you have to spawn it on the appropriate tile. So I can't spawn it on a prairie tile. Let's give that a try. So he's probably going to drop one there and then attack me. Yep. Goes after my yak, that bastard. What's that? Slaughtering Shadow. It's just a generic creature. Alright, so I have an Imperial Guard. So what I can do is... Drop this guy here, and now he is forced to attack him. Could because it has taunt. I want to save for the Verduran Forest because it's a bit of a tank. It's a very tanky unit. So what I'm going to do is drop that there. Maybe it would be better to have the Queen's Assassin over here, but you never know. So if he moves that guy there, he's going to immediately get that mana because he moved it. Because when you move a unit to a hex adjacent to a mana well, you immediately collect it. The Durin Force. And the thing is, when you play a unit, <coughs> when you play a unit, you cannot, it can't do anything immediately unless it has an ability that allows it to do so. Also, what I want to do is I also want to get a water tile, so if I draw any of my water cards, I can actually use them. There we go. Air elemental. So as a gift, so it's gonna immediately create a desert. And this guy can fly, so we can move over the sea, which is what the empty hexes are called. Sea thrower, don't have enough for that. Beastmaster, H I already have one of those. So what I want to do is wipe this guy out. And then I am going to I'm going to, what do I want to do? 
draw mana, and deploy my Steam Forge Enforcer. Yeah, I like having lots of creatures. Because I get objectives for using them. And daily quests completed because of it. And that's the dude. Just a pretty generic guy. Go. Yeah, it's a useless thing to do. It's a gift, so um, I probably would have been better off with a seed thrower. Yeah, whatever. Sometimes I don't think things true. Falcon dive. One damage. See, that's a smart thing to do because then. It's not like a, you can kill a spell. That would be funny if you could. And then. Basically, if you don't control the tile, what you can do is you can move one of your creatures onto it, and that gives you control of it. So you can spawn more land. And then that guy's 8-8. Eight, eight. This guy can move up. Probably get, uh, probably get seed through our next turn. That'll be delightful. Whatever that thing is. Oblivion Rider, charge three. Mutual kill. Drop them there, and seed thrower. And then what it does is then he throws some more land down for me. Okay. I think that'll be enough for now. Demon wing flying. Hmm. So I just made this guy into a bit of a tank. Because why not? And now I can start attacking the enemy god directly. If I call correctly, you can attack the enemy god regardless of whether or not there are any creatures on the ground. Uh, let's get some mana. Because I don't really think I need any more land at the moment. One of those guys. So this guy's gonna die. Another seed thrower. Be and get that guy for the taunt, and he gets buffed up. Cause this ancient beast master is pretty handy. Imperial Guard. So I'm gonna I have to attack that guy now. So I'll that guy do it. Since both of them can one shot him, but I want to do more damage to the god. Just drop that guy there for some control. Get mana. Ancient Beastmaster. Get another one of them, why not? Doesn't really do much for me, but I'm pretty well sir I'm gonna win this because the computer this particular AI enemy is not the you know most um, difficult one I don't know words fail me 
And one more. There you go, got some XP, and then, yeah, there's my quest progression. Oh, this guy's a puzzle, which means that there's certain things you have to achieve. The mysterious Jaunir watches over the cosmos and plays tutor to gods. I have to win in this turn. So do that. Attack. Then I give this guy Callum's training, which gives him more damage and makes him fly. Which allows me to do this. Pretty basic. Like I said these are just a training mission, so they're going to be pretty easy. Alright, so I just have to fight this guy again. And now I'll complete the training pack. Uh, green starter. All right. I play first. Uh, sure. Or. Mm. I'll try starting with this. There we go. All right. And time to stop, drop, start dropping fours. So I can actually deploy my green cards. All your creatures have flying. That's going to be brutal. So they're going to fly and they're going to be tough as nails. <coughs> um... Go. What's this guy playing at? He's doing that. Go. Maybe I would have been better so sending him in there. Who knows? Who knows? End turn. Do I want to get the overgrown tower? Maybe. It's, this is a structure, so it only has health. It can't attack. Oh, that's going to be fun. So I can play this. Do that. And I can activate it. And it takes one HP away from that, and but gives him my target creature one attack, one HP. I think it's handy. That's gone. I don't really can't really play anything else right now. Let's just grab a quick water tile. This is just going to be a mutual kill. Sorry, I lose control over that. Saving for something? Maybe I should have drawn more mana, that might have been handy. Another one of those boot dudes. Okay. If you can put 
some pressure on him. Go. Not really defending myself very well. Let's see how it goes. Because I want that thing gone. My turn. This so one I'm just going to get a farm board to control the mana. And get one of these to defend. And then get that guy out of there. And anything else I want to do. Nope, think I'm good. I also need to just do the terrain thing. Oh, maybe I should have drawn more mana. Eh. Nah. Who needs this? Who needs strategy and tactics when I can just spam things against the AI? No. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, get one of these guys just for mana control. Probably not the most efficient use of it, but... I think I'm gonna get a Viduran Force next. Don't believe these guys' abilities stack, otherwise that could be silly. I do believe in the... when you play against another player, this thing here will start to drain slowly so you can't just take forever on a turn. Uh, anyway, there we go. Drop that guy right there. Oh, but that's stack. So, you know, it's a 9 9 creature on his doorstep. I think I can move this guy up safely. And fuck it, let's make it a 10 10. That's just too much fun. Is it? Uh huh. Actually, I don't need to do anything. I can just send it right here. Victory. Mission pack complete. And I've received a new daily quest. Yay. I'm not quite sure when exactly you receive it. There's like if it's on a timer or if you for doing stuff. And yeah. Play ten neutral cards. And flourish. Play ten green cards. New formula unlocked. Yellow starter. Alright, these are mission packs based off those characters, I guess. Play a game with a special orb or avatar. Okay. Avatar. So I have the Azure Sprite. Yeah, it's different avatars of different levels of rarity. Some of them you can buy. I like this guy. Sarah Yackington. I want it. So I can do that. Okay, I don't know. I like the look of this guy. It's pretty cool. I think I'll do that just to see if that is what the objective refers to. The daily quest. Uh, not the friend list. So if I go to the right menu, there we go. Um, that takes you out of the game to something. I think it's for a pre-order they're doing for us, a pack expansion thing for the game. 
Actually, I got the new formula. So, new deck. Yellow starter. So I have 28 of 30 cards, so I have to add two cards to it. Uh, that's what I got. Full Elder, Pure Guard, Rebel Slinger, Sound Horseman, Maceman, Freedom Fighter. Soul Pact. So I can deal two damage to myself if I want to with this guy. Okay. I don't know if there's anything I want to add to this. Farm boy? Get two of those? I don't know. Power not getting I'm really liking the my green deck. And let's, yeah, let's open a chest. Or, not open a chest. Go to the shop, buy a chest, then open the chest. And it looks like the menu is locked at 30 FPS. I don't know, I mean, 60 FPS. I don't know if the game it, or the actual battles themselves are. Continue. And let's see what I got. Flame Spitter, Battle Toads. That's new. Yeah, when you play this guy, it immediately damages the enemy avatar. Just one damage, though. Last Nightmare. Destroy a creature. Okay. Village Elder. Pretty generic card. That's new. Kalem's Prayer. It's an interesting card, though. Keep it. It's a yellow card, so I don't... Not really gonna do anything with it, but it's good to keep that in, on hand. And yeah, let's play a game. Let's do a battle, see if I can match against somebody. Casual. I am a filthy casual. Go, got green selected, got casual. Let's go! Or maybe I'm... Or do I want to do rank? That way I'm more... Probably more likely to get matched against another low-ranked player. I don't know. Let's try it. Do ranked. I really like the art style in this game. It's not like the most imaginative thing, you know, the most original, but just I like I like it. I think it works. Oh, I'm in a game. Against whoever this guy is. Here I am. Alright. I play first. Confirm. And there's yeah, there's my turn timer ticking down. So I think I'll do an economy start. Get that mana flowing. And end turn. Forest right off the bat. Fairy tree. Ooh, that's handy. So, probably want to get rid of that before it starts sprouting stuff on me. Or it starts giving. Giving that guy buckets of mana. Guess what? Yeah, it's 10 mana. If only I had like Eagle Strike or something to use against it. Anyway. And turn. Seed Sower. Okay. My Viduran Force. And also drop that. There we go. I'm also going to send my Silent Horse Master out over here. Next turn. 
get that mana well going. Should have gone out to my farm boy. Okay, might get a Grove Guardian out next. Oh, maybe he's gonna try and hit my god. I guess my concern is that thing's gonna give him a pile of mana. Yep, that's 10 mana for him, that's 18. He can start pulling some very unpleasant things on me now. That's a fun one. And end turn here. Okay. My turn. What do I want to do? Give him a bunch of health. It's lovely. Very yak. It's the best. Okay. Yeah. Oh, 
Ooh, that's unpleasant. Yeah, that's harsh. Hey. Oh, that was... Wow. My heart's actually pounding. That's close. Okay, so yeah, that did complete my daily quest. Alright. Okay. First one of the day. Oh, it's just throwing stuff at me now. I've unlocked crafting. Okay. I need to learn how to do the emote thing so I could say, yeah, well played to my opponent. It's just kind of rude for me just being quiet. Okay, craft a card. Time to learn how crafting works. Yeah. There we go. I have 65 memorias. So that's the crystal stuff. Used to craft new cards. Get more memory by disenchanting cards you own. Okay. So okay, so yeah, here's all the neutral cards. Of these. Um okay. That looks fun. So I can craft a card. How much, how much does it cost though? So I've crafted Famine? Is that a good thing? how this works. Okay, I see. I, I clicked done. Yeah, I know what I'm doing now. So famine, it costs 20 memoria to craft. There we go. Data quest complete, I got 30 more memoria. Gotta spend it to make it, I guess. And if I want, I can edit this. Or can I go back? There we go. So edit. Um, do I want to add famine? Maybe I'll drop this. Place it with famine. Because we all need more famine in our lives, right? Yeah, it's still... Just make sure I actually do that. Alright. So, yeah, that was... This is Faria. It's a f fun little game, I guess. Um, probably not going to be a 
it probably won't make a regular appearance on my channel, but I thought it was just a fun game I'd like to show to you guys. Anyway, I'm Xander Turon, and this was Let's Try Feria. You guys, have a lovely day.